The makers of Jack Daniels, America's favorite whiskey, have admitted for the first time that the person responsible for creating the recipe behind the brand was in fact a Tennessee slave. For 150 years, the legend has it that Dan Call, a reverend bootlegger, passed on the secrets of his recipe to Jasper Newton, Jack Daniel, um, but is now finally admitted that in fact it wasn't Dan Call, but Dan Call's slave, Nearest Green, who was responsible for creating the secrets behind the recipe, and that it was Nearest Green who passed on the recipe to Jasper Daniel, and then from that created the iconic brand. So revisionist history, <laughs> people are celebrating it and celebrating that it's, it's taken 150 years to get there, and there is so much, um, so much, so little rather, that's written about um, black people and African Americans during this time of slavery that it was very, very difficult to actually discern this. And I think the, the brand themselves have been hiding behind that, but it's been known or well known to local historians for a number of years who the true, you know, the, who the. the who was truly responsible for creating the recipe. And now finally, to coincide with the 150-year anniversary of the brand, they've said, okay, yeah, it was Nearest Green. Okay, I was gonna ask, I was like, what is the impetus now to do it, but it's more well, of a symbolic I think what or... They want, what they want is us to think is, okay, we've just kind of been able to confirm this. We have just discovered that this is for sure the fact. Right. But no, I think, like you said, you used the word admitted, and I think that's the right word to use here, because ine inevitably, it was gonna get out to more people. More, you said that local historians already knew this, right? But I think they were kind of just saving their own asses. Maybe it's even a marketing ploy. I mean, who knows? There's a lot of them different. Sure, and I think I think the criticism is is that there's an extent to whitewash history, which is you know, prevalent amongst not just for Jack Daniels, but we're talking about Jack Daniels now. So there's been a, a, an impetus to do that, and there is some sense that there's been a cover up here because it's just it just plays into the legend of that story. I mean, just look at that image behind me. That image is, that's nearest green right there. And, and a lot of people have said, if you don't need any more evidence than the fact that there's an image of a black man sitting amongst a bunch of white folks, um, uh, which at the time, that would not have been the case because they, they were slaves. They did not have that status. Why on earth would a black person be sitting in a line? Normally they would be sitting behind, they wouldn't even be on camera necessarily. They wouldn't be, a photograph wouldn't be taken of them. They would actually, if anything, they would be behind all the white people. And so that in of itself indicates the status that Nearest Green had because he was actually the person that invented the recipe behind the brand. And finally they've come to it and they finally admitted it and a lot of people are criticizing Jack Daniels and, uh, and cynically questioning why because they're saying, well, millennials, they're obviously trying to reach out to a whole new brand of consumers and millennials like dig you know, kind of social issues and social equality. So yeah, we'll just come clean. I, I, I think it's got such a murky, uh, uh, it's somewhat not sinister, but just a, an unpleasantness to this story behind it that I, I feel crit. I mean, it's great that they finally admitted it, but it's taken them 150 years to do it, and that's why I have a problem with that. Well, right? also, Who's like, making all the money? Yeah, right? I was going to yes. say, like, are they giving any money right. to his relatives? Any kind of reparation for that? You know, I mean, I'm certainly not surprised by the whitewashing that's happened for so many uh, years and in so many circumstances, but. I mean, it's great that they admitted it, as you said, but I think some, some money needs to be coughed up. If it's America's fam favorite whiskey, I mean, they're, they're selling a lot of cases, no? White watching is still going on, by the way. Just open a Texas textbook. Just uh, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, and the, t the Tennessee whiskey, as you said, if it, was, if it was today's day and age, there'd be intellectual property over that particular recipe, and, and the, the, the Green family would be multimillionaires. Uh, I, I do not believe that is the case, and whether there'll be any reparations to the Green family is highly unlikely. Uh, because at the time, obviously, he didn't have status. Um, slavery was amended and it was outlawed by the 13th Amendment in 1865. And a year later, 1866, the distillery was opened and they actually employed two of Green's sons at that time. Um, and finally, Jack Daniels admitting uh, how important, how critical Nearest Green was in creating the iconic brand.